Good evening and welcome to InfoWars Nightly News with me, your host, Paul Joseph Watson, sitting in for Alex Jones on this November 22nd, 2011. Coming up, the latest TSA rape case, Ron Paul gets occupied, and the latest on the situation in Egypt and much more. But to start the broadcast, we've got an exclusive interview with Gary Franchi about some exciting Ron Paul poll results out of Iowa, which show the Texas congressman is not only ahead of Barack Obama, but is also beating his Republican challengers. And those results will not be published until tomorrow, but we've got the exclusive on what the figures are showing right now with Gary Franchi speaking here with Aaron Dyer. Thank you, Paul. And now for a detailed look at what that poll shows and what it means. We turn now to Gary Franchi, chairman of RevolutionPack.com. Uh, we know the mainstream media has used tactics all throughout their black book to keep Ron Paul's name out of the headlines. And yet here he is in this poll, uh, a significant contender in Iowa, if not the outright leader. Gary Franchi, please tell us more about what this poll means. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks for having me. Uh, you know, we understand uh, what's happening in the country today, so we wanted to get a snapshot of Iowa. We wanted to get a true, a true figure, a true scientific figure uh, of what the presidential race looks like, and the results are in. And we did we we did a survey of 29 about 2,900 uh, Iowa residents. Uh, we commissioned the survey through an independent company called Tele Research Corporation, a highly reputable uh, research uh, polling service. And out of those 2,900 uh, people polled, we got 846 likely Republican caucus goers. Okay, now these are the people that are going to go and attend and cast their vote for their selected candidate. Now, as you know, last week, the Bloomberg poll was the big talk of the town, and it showed a, a dead heat among the candidates who are running, uh, you know, Paul and Romney and Kane and these guys here. So uh, what we decided to do was we wanted to find out who was going to cross over from the independent and Democratic side and go and vote. We want to see how much influence the candidates had. And what we discovered was the number one candidate, the candidate that is taking uh, the, the top, he, I mean, this poll shows that the only candidate that has a crossover is Ron Paul. And he leads by a four point margin over Herman Cain. Now, the poll actually had a three point margin of error. That three point margin of error um, shows that we, because, because Ron is four points over, that he is actually in the lead. Now, the the breakdown is actually 678 registered Republican caucus attendees and 168 disaffected Democrats and independents. So what this shows is definitively Ron Paul is in first place for Iowa. Right, for those who don't understand, the margin of error is uh, a standard with these scientific polls. But if you're above that margin of error, that's where you show that you're not in a statistical dead heat, uh, that things are really in a clear trend, especially when you bring in the key, the independence, which is also very important in the mainstream races, obviously. Oh, without question, because, see, most people give Obama the race uh, in 08 because of the independent vote. Um, what we're starting to see now with this poll is that people are saying that Ron Paul is going to pull in the Democrats. He's going to pull in the independents. He has the crossover appeal. None of the other candidates have that ability, and this poll definitively shows that. And even when you just talk about the niche Republican group, uh true diehard Republicans, he's still at a statistical dead heat with Kane and Newt Gingrich, right? That's correct, yes. There's, it, it's still, with just the, the baseline Republican vote, there is still a statistical dead heat. Um, but when once you incorporate Democrats and independents, it puts Ron Paul over the top. So with this poll, the Republicans, the leading Republicans, okay, if you want to play the two-party race and you want, you know, we all know, we all know the game. But uh, the, it is a game. It's actually happening. And if the Republicans really have a desire to win, if they want to win this race, then they need to get behind Ron Paul because he's the only one that could actually take it from Obama because he can pull in those Democrats and Republicans away from Obama. 
And people are tired of all the lies. I think they see through both sides of the spectrum in many cases, and, and Obama's so full of it, as are the others. Now, the other important thing that other recent polls have shown is that while there may be a close matchup with people like Kane and Gingrich, they have kind of a fluctuating support. Most of the people who identify they're going to vote for those candidates are not entrenched, whereas a very significant portion of Ron Paul supporters say they have decided for sure who the candidate is, they're dedicated to him, they're showing up no matter what to vote for Ron Paul. The other ones, they're going to see which way the wind blows, perhaps. Well, the message of liberty is infectious, and it spreads. It does. It spreads like a virus. Once you get once you get bit by the bug of freedom, and you understand Ron Paul's message, it's really hard to turn away from it because your eyes are open to the reality of what's happening. So, you almost feel guilty to turn away from it. It's like it's like sort of like pretending that the that um, you know you didn't watch a car crash or something like that. So, people. Once they tur get turned on to Ron Paul, they stay turned on to Ron Paul, and then they continue to spread the message. The other candidates don't have that same infectious groove that Ron Paul does. Uh, one thing that, that we did discover, and I, I really wanted to put this question in the poll, uh, was uh, this is the specific question. We said, next, as a voter, do you have one issue that is a primary factor in deciding for whom you will vote? And... Um, Economy, jobs, government debt, and bailouts came in at 45%. That is the leading issue in the country today, economy, jobs, government debt, and bailouts. Now, the, the, the following question, now another one, another clinching question that really shows what is happening in the country and where the temperature of freedom is. We asked, which of the following do you feel pose the greatest threat to your long-term peace and national security? We select one of the following. Now we asked about China, revitalized Russia, North Korea, Iran, and interventionist foreign policy. Interventionist foreign policy came in at 27%. 27%. It came in at second place. So out of out of all the people, okay, that's not just Republican, likely Republican caucus goers. That's of the larger sample size of 2,900. Out of 2,900 people, 27% said that an interventionist foreign policy is the greatest threat to national security. That vindicates and shows that Ron Paul's message of a non-interventionist foreign policy is gaining steam. Right, and he's obviously been the most credible person on economic issues as well, and obviously that looms very large. And Obama and the other establishment GOP people have been totally discredited when it comes to beating the war drums. Now, I want to get into the activism itself because your PAC has been putting commercials out there, doing other great work, and this is a great idea. We did this at InfoWars back in the 08 cycle. Maybe we'll get on it here in 2012 as well. Uh, people can commission polls. They can do other things to bring attention to this candidate or any issue when the mainstream media is obviously dedicated towards keeping his name out of the papers and so forth. The polls themselves are scientific and you could simply hire out the crews who know how to do this, but if they don't put Ron Paul's name in the question, he's not going to show up in the statistics, yet here he is leading the pack by four points. Newt Gingrich and Herman Cain at 21 and 20 percent respectively. The other candidates far further down, Mitt Romney only at 15 percent here in this poll with, what, five weeks to go till Iowa, January 3rd? Yeah, and you know, you want to talk about the activism. The thing about the Revolution Pack, as I, as I spoke to you guys earlier on the show today, is that... Uh, we have a significant advantage that a traditional presidential campaign has. Uh, as you know, presidential campaigns do have a campaign donation limit. We do not. And people can support us at revolutionpack.com. We, we actually um, we have in the works the possibility of doing another poll in the future. Uh, but our yeah. big dream, this is the big dream where we need people to step up to the plate. We have revolutionary internet marketing technology, stuff that has never been seen before, that can be deployed, that can change the entire game. Not just internet marketing or internet advertising technology, but we also have the ability to blanket the states of Iowa with television ads, uh, billboards, uh, bus stops, I mean, everywhere you look, if you give us the contribution, we can make it happen. We can put Ron Paul's name everywhere, and there will be no way 
that he can be denied. We're going to keep him. We're going to keep Ron Paul in the frontal lobe of the people in Iowa, of the people of New Hampshire, and we need your support to do that at revolutionpack.com. Well, there's no doubt that the message is getting out there, but I agree. People don't need to stop. Even if he doesn't get the nomination, he can run in a, as an independent, or even if he doesn't, we still need to get the message of liberty out there because what he really represents are those important issues. Uh, I think just for reference, they wanted to show the Zogby poll that InfoWars commissioned in 2008. That was an interesting one. It was at a time when Ron Paul really didn't have the kind of recognition name-wise that he now has. Now almost everyone knows who Ron Paul is. At the time, we did a blind bio, as they call it, with, you see, candidate A is a 10-term congressman from a large southern state goes on to describe them, and Ron Paul did very well in that when it wasn't a name game. Uh, at the same time, we had to rewrite questions like Mitt Romney's blind bio, because they were openly uh, putting heroics in there and loaded words and uh, buzz terms that caused people to trend towards the, the manufactured candidates. It's just an interesting study on polling in general. Uh, your final yeah. comments, Franchi. Aaron, what I, what I wanted to point out, I'm glad you, you discussed the buzzwords in polls. What we did in this poll is we made it totally dry, totally generic, no buzzwords. Uh, it's just like, you know, who's your favorable, who's your unfavorable, who's your first choice, who's your second choice, and we left it at that. It's straight statistics, it's straight science, and, it's, and it shows that Ron Paul is the leading candidate in Iowa, and he has the – he has the possibility to take the whole state, and we need your support at Revolution Pack to keep the momentum, to keep the pressure on revolutionpack.com. Please support us. Thanks, Gary. And of course, Iowa has always historically been the place to watch for primary elections. Uh, at the same time, they've moved up so many of the other primaries, making them earlier and earlier. It'll be interesting to watch if that affects the influence of an outside candidate like Ron Paul. Uh, traditionally, it would reinforce the support for a big-time candidate, a Romney or, or Kane, who has the mainstream backing. Uh, so we'll see what happens when they move up these primaries. But that's something to look at in another segment at another time. For now, uh, this is Aaron Dykes reporting for InfoWars Nightly News. Back to you, Paul Watson. Thanks, Aaron. Now, these poll numbers are obviously really exciting for Ron Paul supporters because, as we know, Iowa is the key first battleground state in the whole nomination process. And the results actually tally with an article that I wrote a few days ago, which concerned the Bloomberg News poll, which gave a similar outcome. And not only is Ron Paul stronger in the numbers with this margin of error of 3%, he still overrides that. But his support is more solidified than a, any other candidate, candidate in that state. Uh, Ron Paul supporters are the least likely to change their minds, whereas the likes of Kane and Gingrich supporters are. So this all bodes well for Ron Paul being able to build momentum in this key early battleground state, and it will force the establishment media to change tactics. They will be forced to take Ron Paul seriously and give his, the, give his campaign the kind of coverage it deserves. They won't be able to limit Ron Paul to 89 seconds out of a 90-minute debate as CBS News news did last Saturday. So it's a very exciting development and we've got that exclusive story right now on Infowars.com with more to come tomorrow. Now in a related story, Ron Paul gets occupied. A Ron Paul town hall event yesterday was disrupted by Occupy Wall Street protesters who interrupted his speech to proclaim that they were the 99% while complaining about the criminals on Wall Street. Do you feel better? <laughs> you know, let me, let, me, let me address that for a minute, because if you listen carefully, I'm very much involved with the 99. I've been condemning that 1% because they've been ripping us off for the <laughs> So we need, we, need, we need to sort that out. But the people on Wall Street got the bailouts, and you guys got stuck with the bills, and I think that's where the problem is. 
As Steve Watson writes on Infowars, it's not exactly clear whether the Occupy sympathizers were taking issue with Ron Paul's campaign or simply using the event to get publicity. Some did appear to be shouting, quote, Obama during the exchange. So why are people protesting Wall Street by disrupting the event of a presidential candidate who takes virtually no money from Wall Street? while half of them, according to the polls, plan to actually vote for Barack Obama, the ultimate Wall Street puppet. I mean, who is steering these people? We reported yesterday how the Occupy Wall Street official website had banned all material from Alex Jones and Infowars, glibly claiming that they agree with free speech unless it represents, quote, fascism. So apparently we're all fascists now. I didn't get the memo on that one. But now it appears that Occupy Wall Street protesters are targeting Ron Paul. They're not disrupting Newt Gingrich, who told OWS protesters to go take a bath and get a job. They're not interrupting Mr. Wall Street, Mitt Romney. They're disrupting Ron Paul, the biggest critic of Wall Street, currently running a presidential campaign. So what's wrong with this picture? It's another blatant attempt by the likes of MoveOn.org and other establishment leftist Obama campaign fronts to co-opt the Occupy movement and to ensure that the Ron Paul revolution has no influence on its actions so as to run the whole thing into the ground. I mean, the Occupy Wall Street protesters need to get wise as to who is steering them and what agenda they are serving because... Uh, pissing off Ron Paul supporters, this sizable and hugely energetic grassroots movement that's, you know, shaken the core of the establishment for longer than most of these OWS protesters have been out of high school is an in incredibly stupid and naive thing to do. So OWS protesters really need to get wise and need to wake up to whose agenda they are serving. <laughs> More on the infamous viral video pepper spraying incident at the University of California, which occurred, of course, on Friday and has since garnered worldwide attention. It now turns out that the cop involved in pepper spraying the students there for the crime of blocking a path was, in fact, honored. The Associated Press is reporting pepper spraying California officer previously honored the riot clad police officer who pepper sprayed a row of peaceful Occupy Wall Street protesters at a California university last week is a retired US Marine sergeant who has been honored for his police work on campus but also has figured in a previous discrimination suit against the university. So we've got increasing fallout from this story. We've got a basically a Tiananmen Square style response with the artwork. There's there's um, pictures and drawings of this guy superimposed onto, for example, spraying Jesus at the Last Supper. It's gone absolutely super viral. The outrage has gone through the roof. Uh, we had this University of California chance Chancellor Linda Katihi who tried to calm the nerves of the students of the protesters there by addressing them um, earlier today. We've also got a comment now on this from Michael Moore, who has come out on MSNBC and blamed Homeland Security um, for the brutality that we saw in the video. During a, an appearance on MSNBC, Moore correctly identified the cancer that is militarizing and corrupting law enforcement bodies, namely through Homeland Security funding. Now, it was just a few days ago that police in Tampa rolled out a 12-ton armored vehicle to deal with a handful of OWS protesters. And, of course, we also have uh, police departments using Homeland Security grants to purchase unmanned drone helicopters that can taser suspects. So everything that we saw being used against the alleged terrorists in Iraq and Afghanistan is now being targeted against the American people, thanks to Homeland Security. Uh, and if the cop in that now infamous video out of Portland casually pepper spraying non-violent students is anything to go for, go by, how long is it before we see a Tiananmen Square style incident in the United States, which is precisely what Michael Moore has warned about in this appearance on MSNBC. This was just 11 students in a not very well-known UC campus. And the images of this have resonated around uh, the world in the same way that the lone uh, young man standing in front of the tanks at Tiananmen Square resonated. This will be an iconic uh, moment 
in this Occupy Wall Street movement, which clearly now has shifted uh, to an even larger movement on campuses. Now, of course, we had the reaction to the shooting incident at the White House uh, several days ago with a report out of the New York Times basically blaming the fact that the uh, alleged shooter had watched Alex Jones's film The Obama Deception, which has literally been seen by upwards of 30 million people. We had the New York Times blaming that as an influence behind the shooting. Here's Alex Jones with a YouTube clip in which he clarifies his response to the New York Times outrageous association with the Obama deception and this White House shooter. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here with some incredibly important breaking news. I covered it today on the radio. I'll cover it more tomorrow. The Obama administration, through their operatives, has had the New York Times come out and try to claim with no facts or proof that the guy that uh, reportedly, allegedly shot up the White House with an AK-47 did it because he was a fan of my film, The Obama Deception. Now, they did this with Richard Poplowski that shot the three cops and later came out that he was a white supremacist who hated me, and the government knew that, and instead of pointing that out, just claimed he did it because he liked me when I'm calling for nonviolence. Uh, they did it with the Tucson shooter. Turned out he was a leftist. That was all lies. And we've had the Obama deception hacked and taken down. We've had fake copyright claims put on it. It's been seen more than 35 million times. Total, all the different versions are up there. Some have over 10 million, some 9.5 million. Um, it's incredible. And an attack on our First Amendment is an attack on your First Amendment. Now, someone is all over the thing with these hack dummy accounts calling for violence against Obama on my YouTube so that when media all over the country goes to look at that video because the New York Times is talking about it and national TV is blaming it on me basically, they will see all those calls for violence. It's a way to get conservatives and liberals at each other's throats instead of waking up the banksters. And that's why they're so scared of the Obama deception. The Obama deception says that Obama is a charming, nice guy, but a puppet of the banksters and that he'll be politically built up and destroyed. And I said it three years ago. I talked about Europe being imploded by a banking crisis that would lead to a bank of the world and a Goldman Sachs banking dictatorship. Now that's in Time Magazine, Newsweek, Financial Times of London, you know, the banker coup in Europe. The film is so dead on. It's like it was made today, but it was made from the time he got elected in November until January and then February, and I released it when the FBI visited my offices and was asking questions about it. They used some other reason to come to my office gave us a gag order, but then asked us about it, and we would call my employees and ask about the film, so we had to release it early. The Obama deception scares the daylights out of them, and it should. It tells the truth, and it exposes the next right-wing puppet that's coming. It gets past the puppets to the actual ruling elite. If we don't stand together for my First Amendment, you will lose your First Amendment. The Occupy Wall Street group has banned my name being posted on their website calling it fascism. Oh, they're for free speech as long as it's not fascism. This is incredible. We are seeing more and more draconian pushes to restrict free speech in this country, and it's so dangerous to all of us. Please, please get the links out to everybody. Please mirror it on your site. Please get the DVDs, make copies of them, on Access Television. But even if you disagreed with the information in the Obama deception, you should certainly get it out to everyone you know and support it because it's under attack. It's, it's a First Amendment free speech issue. But I know if you'll actually watch the film, instead of listing the New York Times, you'll see that it's for nonviolence, that it's against offensive violence, that it explains that the Federal Reserve's the problem, not the puppet presidents. It exposes the CFR, Trilateral Commission, the banking cartel. It predicted the invasion of Libya, everything, three years ago. Get it out to everybody you know while you still can. The fact that the Obama administration continues to demonize this, it came out a year ago, I'm on their enemies list, shows this is happening because the bankers that control him are very, very upset about what we're doing, exposing uh, MF Global and the rest of it. So much is happening right now, and, and, and we've got to defend free speech from the Internet kill switches and the rest of it. It's all coming down right now. If we lose Infowars.com, if we lose films like The Obama Deception, nobody's safe. Why does the system not want you to see The Obama Deception? Why are they spamming it with calls for violence right now to shut down one of the big YouTube versions with nine and a half plus million views? Because the truth hurts, and this film exposes Obama not as the big wicked devil, that this guy supposedly thought he was, the Antichrist, but as a little puppet, a nobody that he is, just like other modern presidents.
please get this information out to everybody. Stand for the First Amendment today. Don't let them kill free speech by killing the Obama deception. We don't want anything to happen to Barack Obama. He is nothing but a puppet. We want the criminal interest behind him to be brought to justice. They use him like a shield that takes all the heat. And after four years, they throw him down and pick up a new Republican shield. When they're done with that, they pick up another one. That's what's really happening here. I'm Alex Jones from the front lines of the InfoWars. InfoWars.com. We'll take a break now on InfoWars Nightly News. But coming up, we've got more about the TSA rape case. We've got our Man on the Street special feature. We're going to hear about the latest situation in Egypt. We've got a new scandal with ClimateGate 2.0. But I, at this moment, I'd like to encourage people to subscribe to PrisonPlanet.tv. Of course, we're running uh, the yearly Christmas special. You can get the Patriot package, uh, which is a 44% discount on the usual month-to-month -month price for a PrisonPlanet.tv subscription. Not only do you get live access to the radio show and obviously InfoWars Nightly News. You also get voluminous library of archives spanning back to 2004 with special reports and much, much more. So that's the Patriot package with 44% off the usual price. And we've also got the Info Warrior package, which is a whopping 70% off the usual price. And that not only includes a year subscription to prisonplanet.tv. It also includes um, 18 Alex Jones movies on DVD. You get every single hard copy DVD of Alex Jones's movies in addition to a year subscription for prisonplanet.tv. And that is reduced from $430.55 to just $129.95, which is 70% off the usual price. So we got the Patriot, the Info Warrior. That's how you support the Info War. That's how you support InfoWars Nightly News. So I encourage all uh, viewers on YouTube to take advantage of those special discounts at PrisonPlanet.tv. If you believe in this information and want to support its viral spread, go to the InfoWars store at InfoWars.com. We've got the new G.I. Joe InfoWars t-shirts. We've got the incredible ProPure gravity-fed filters available at InfoWars.com in the store. We've got a new DVD, Sign Us Under Attack, the Don't Tread on Me flag. We've got all sorts of different bumper stickers to help spread the rebellion virally. It's all there, wristbands, citizen rule books in every order. Order online at InfoWars.com today. The water filters, the canteens, it's all there. InfoWars.com. Welcome back to InfoWars Nightly News with me, your host, Paul Joseph Watson. Let's continue with the top stories today. TSA worker in uniform flashes badge, brutally rapes woman. Yet another example of a TSA agent engaging in rampant criminality and believing themselves to be above the law emerged yesterday when 52-year-old TSA worker Harold Glenn Rodman allegedly approached a woman in full uniform before flashing his badge and proceeding to brutally rape and sodomize her. Police say that a man wearing a TSA uniform flashed a badge to a woman in Manassas and then sexually assaulted her. They say that man is 52-year-old TSA employee Harold Rodman. Gail Pennybacher is live from the Manassas neighborhood now with more. Gail. And if that news isn't shocking enough, Leon, what people are realizing here in this community is that the man happens to be one of their own neighbors. He lives steps away from where the alleged attack occurred. Now, this epidemic of abuse and criminality on behalf of TSA agents is something we cover here at InfoWars routinely. There's a new TSA horror story every week, sometimes multiple times weekly. We've got off-duty workers in uniforms flashing their badges as if it gives them immunity from the law to carry out harassment and sexual attacks primarily directed towards women. That's the kind of people that the Department of Homeland Security likes to hire. So why are we seeing this criminal epidemic? Is it the fact that criminals and sexual deviants are attracted to applying for TSA jobs because it gives them the power to grope, intimidate, terrorize, and dominate women and children? Or is it the federal agency itself training these goons that they have carte blanche to do whatever they want? 
personally, I think it's a mixture of the, of the two, but we're going to see a lot more of these stories uh, with the TSA now being deployed in bus, ter in bus terminals, train stations, and of course on the highways. And remember all that paranoia about Obama's national civilian security force? Well, this is it. I mean, as, as Jesse Ventura's case against the TSA has proved, the feds have created an agency that is above the law. When Texas tried to kick them out of the state, the, the feds threatened economic terrorism. They threatened to, uh, to impose a no-fly zone over Texas. So is it really any surprise that the employees of an agency that has been placed above the law now thinks that they can just flash a badge and rape women without any consequences? I mean, as Mike Adams discussed on the show last night, this is another example of trickle-down tyranny. These TSA thugs are merely aping the behavior that government has defined as being acceptable. Torture and oppression. And the pepper spraying cop video, which we showed earlier, again illustrates that America's entire law enforcement and legal system is based on intimidating or torturing people into following orders. It's the pain compliance police state. And until lawmakers step up to the plate and put some teeth into efforts to abolish the TSA, we're only going to see more of it. Okay, now we go to Darren McBreen with our regular Man on the Street feature. And today, Darren's been at Austin Bergstrom Airport talking to people about how they feel with the announcement that the new cancer-causing radiation body scanners will be installed at Austin Bergstrom Airport. Over to you, Darren. As we've documented here on InfoWars, there are scores of experts and scientists who are on record warning people that there is a significant radiation risk from airport body scanners. Yet the federal government has installed and activated these x-ray machines in just about every airport across the country, including here at Austin International. Okay, so there's increased security at airports. They're rolling out the, the naked body scanners, the TSA grove downs, things like that. Is all this necessary for security? Do you feel it makes you feel safer? Do you feel it's no, a privacy? No, it does not make me feel safer at all. I think it's, I actually think it's pretty messed up what they're doing. Does it make you feel safer or do you think it's a, a, an infringement on your privacy? I definitely feel safer in anything they can do to Increased security, I think, is a blessing for all of us. You can't be overly safe. I don't know if everyone should be subjected to that. I, I think it does make me feel a little bit safer knowing that there's at least, at least that they're trying. The idea that there's a naked picture out there somewhere of me is a little creepy, but also kind of fun. And what about the pat-downs? Some people think that's an infringement of their rights as well. They're being pat down by TSA. And if, if not, they go through the naked body scanners. And is this something that makes you feel safer? Is it something that we need to be doing for our safety? Yeah, I'm afraid. Unfortunately, I'm afraid it is. It's not, I don't feel, you know, I don't feel, I'm a nurse though, see, so <laughs> people with their hands on my body, that doesn't really bother me. I have my hands on people's bodies every day. So, you know, it's not a big deal for me. How do you feel? Do you feel like it's an infringement? I have a mammogram every year again, every year, and they're saying that that, is too high of dose and I disagree it's not too high. With as much as they make us take off to go through those things you, you're not carrying anything on. Yeah, I don't think yeah. it's necessary for the children to be patted down. I really don't uh, appreciate it and I think it's a little bit disrespectful to who I am and what I'm doing so I guess it's a little bit of a privacy infringement. For those of you who plan on avoiding the TSA by staying away from airports, I'm afraid you're in for a rude awakening because the TSA has actually expanded its Viper program, which is already active in airports, bus terminals, and subway stations, but now it also includes roadside inspections of commercial vehicles on the roads and highways across America. So a lot of people are refusing to fly because they don't want to go through this, but um, there's also privacy advocates who uh, I think are justly concerned that this, these TSA uh, checkpoints are expanding, not only airports, but their bus terminals, their subway stations, and now even roadside checkpoints. So they're stopping cars on freeways and roads across America. Are they going too far? Definitely going too far. I've never heard of that, but yeah, if they are doing that, that's, yeah, that's, they are going very far. I think they're going a little too far. Yeah, I think that's going a little too far. I, I don't think that's the best use of our time and, and resources. No, I think that's going a little too far. I don't think that might be a waste of resources. I believe right now we're at a time and age where it's necessary. Let's say the terrorists hate us for our freedoms, 
then they're winning. <laughs> because now we're no longer free if we're going to be you know, subject to illegal searches and seizures. What would you say to those folks? I think that's taking it a little extreme. It's not that you're not free. We're just being really safe. Now, it's interesting to note that earlier this year, a bill was introduced to the Texas legislature that would actually bar full body scans and full body pat downs at airports. As you can imagine, the bill attracted much support and gained momentum, but was shot down as the State Department threatened to implement a no fly zone across the entire state of Texas, should the bill pass. And now the TSA want their agents patting down, searching, scanning, and harassing American citizens at all levels of society. And not just at transportation hubs, but at major sporting events, in the streets, and on the highways across America. I'm Darren McBreen for InfoWars Nightly News. Thanks for that report, Darren. Now moving on with the rest of the news. Egypt renames its secret police Homeland Security. The Financial Times reports that Egypt has renamed its brutal and infamous secret police apparatus as, quote, Homeland Security. That's right, the same security force implicated in the imprisonment and torture of anti-Mubarak political activists has sought to give its much feared and loathed security state a makeover by rebranding it with the name of America's foremost post-9-11 federal agency. Quote, after initial moves to purge the security forces, attempts at systematic reform were halted, say analysts and political observers. Under the auspices of the Ministry of Interior, the 100,000-strong state security service has been renamed Homeland Security and personnel moved around, the Financial Times reports yesterday. So the primary role of Egypt's secret police is to bug phone calls, spy on and harass presumptive candidates in Egypt's democratic elections, which of course are being halted by the ruling military hunter still in charge of the country. And this secret police apparatus has been responsible in the past few days alone for the murder of dozens and the torture of thousands of Egyptian protesters over the course of the last seven days. And as we know, just like it's now Egyptian namesake, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security has increasingly begun to take on its own secret police role within the United States, spying on protest groups and arresting political activists. The DHS's Federal Protective Service was captured on film last week, arresting photograph phot photographers at an Occupy Wall Street event held in Portland. And this unit has also been used by Homeland Security to spy on anti-tax groups and arrest veterans for the crime of complaining to their local VA office. So it fits perfectly to have Egypt secret police aspire to mimic their American counterparts. And indeed, the Egyptian authorities have pointed to the, quote, firm stance taken by U.S. law enforcement in their treatment of Occupy Wall Street protesters to justify their brutal crackdown on pro-democracy demonstrators in Cairo. So again, as we've highlighted, it's no surprise that the likes of Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton, these humanitarian crusaders, have barely uttered a whimper of dissent against the brutal crackdown in Egypt because, of course, we know in 2010 alone, $1.3 billion in aid from the U.S. was sent directly to the ruling military hunter. So the arrests continue, the torture continues, and, of course, the execution of political activists continues in Egypt. And now their secret police has sought to give that some sense of legitimacy by renaming themselves Homeland Security. Should we be concerned? Now, the fallout from the MF Global financial scandal continues to worsen. We have an, ar an article out of Reuters today. Farm Belt rage over MF Global could chill markets. Quote, when the CME Group pledged $300 million of its own money to help former MF Global customers get their cash back faster, the exchange was likely thinking of customers like Kansas 
cattle rancher Tim Reitzker fed up and frustrated with his broker's collapse and what he sees is the CME's slow efforts to help him retrieve $30,000 in stranded capital. Reitzker says his faith in the futures industry has been shaken to the core. Quote, I would be hedging some feeder cattle right now, but I'm not going to do it. I'm leaving them exposed to the cash market and I don't like that, Reitzker said. So as you can see, Far from affecting people with, you know, millions and billions of dollars stored away in this failed financial broker, this is directly affecting people, farmers who invested uh, uh, as little as $30,000. And of course, while the thousands of small time customers like that had their money stolen by MF Global and these regulators that have stepped in afterwards, the big boys, the billionaire financiers like the Koch brothers miraculously managed to completely empty their accounts weeks in advance. Unlike the Gerald Salentes of this world and the farmer who was mentioned in this Reuters article, unlike those people, the big boys got a heads up. And of course, we know that the initial report said that the customer funds had been sent to JP Morgan, who then denied that they had received them despite MF Global executives swearing by it. So the money's still missing. It's now over $1.2 billion. That figure keeps climbing every day. Uh, the big boys got out ahead of time because they got a warning, uh, whereas the smaller investors got burned and are now being told they may get some of their money back. Most of them are being told they'll never see it again. So who is really to blame for uh, the financial instability where confidence in the markets is undermined. Not as Forbes magazine would suggest, Alex Jones and Gerald Salente, it's the criminals who stole the money in the first place. Computerized contact lens will keep you up to date with news and text, reports the Daily Mail. Quote, imagine catching up with your text, social networking, and perhaps the news without having to log onto a computer or even glance at a smartphone. Messages and images would simply appear in front of your eyes, generated by a computerized contact lens. Isn't it all so convenient? And this takes the term iPhone, E-Y-E, -E, to a whole new level. And just like your smartphone, this will be useful to any company or government agency um, as an implantable microchip. It's virtually the same thing. Imagine Big Brother not only being able to listen to your conversations, know your ex exact location, but also having the ability to see through your eyes. Again, very convenient. Now, we've all seen Minority Report, you know, the slaves all required to have their irises scans before they do anything, board a bus, take a train, enter a shopping mall. Now you'll be able to have your very own Mark of the Beast, making dirty cash and annoying credit cards a thing of the past. And, you know, so long as it's marketed by Apple or some of the other hip technology firms as the latest new thing, the latest fashion accessory, all the fanboys will as per usual, rush to consume it. Now, we've been talking about this transhumanist agenda for years and how they'd um, use it, not through coercion, not through force, but by making it cool, convenient, and trendy. That's how they'd implement it. And the mindset of people who advocate this kind of brave new world is implicit in the following quote. Quote, augmenting our species through technology and genetic modification is the way we must go in the long term if we are ever to ascend to something greater than we are. We are not ready yet, though. We need to get rid of a lot of outdated ideas and morals first. And who said that? Aldous Huxley, some insidious eugenicist from the last century? No, it was a respondent to the Daily Mail article. There's literally a whole army of people out there who will not hesitate to hand over control of their bodies to a technocracy in the name of aspiring to some new warped definition of fashion or trendiness. Moving on, ClimateGate 2.0. Newly leaked emails from prominent global warming scientists reveal that even those who promote the man-made climate change thesis know that the science is being manipulated for political purposes. In an article for the London Telegraph, James Dellingpole writes, quote, two years after the climate gate scandal, a further batch of emails have been leaked onto the internet by a person or persons unknown. And as before, they show the scientists at the heart of the man-made global warming industry in a most unflattering light. Michael Mann, Phil Jones, Ben Santa, 
Tom Wigley, Kenneth Tremberth, and Keith Briffer, all your favorite ca Climate Gate characters, are here once again, caught red handed in a series of emails exaggerating the extent of anthropogenic global warming, while privately admitting to one another that the evidence is nowhere near as strong as they'd like it to be. In other words, what these emails confirm is that the great man-made global warming skin scare is not about science, but about political activism. And you can read the newly leaked emails um, at the London Telegraph article by Dellingpole, which is linked on prisonplanet.com. That's going to wrap it up for this edition of InfoWars Nightly News. I've been your host, Paul Joseph Watson. Aaron Dykes is back in the control center tomorrow and then alex jones will be back on friday again we urge you to subscribe at prisonplanet.tv if you're watching this on youtube to get access to all the multimedia content and support the info war that's it for tonight we'll see you back infowars nightly news with the next edition thank you